Ukraine. <coughs> Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're going to talk about fishing, fishing tackle, both in saltwater and the bays. For those of you that um, come down here on vacation and you only got a couple of days and, and you want to just catch some fish, that's what this video is going to be about. I don't claim to be a professional fisherman. I'm a long ways from that. And to be honest with you, I, I really don't want to be a professional fisherman. I'm just here to catch fish and have a good time. That's what fishing is about, having a good time. But it would be nice if you caught fish, right? Today I'm going to go over a bunch of products and stuff that I use all the time, daily basis, weekly basis. Every time I go fishing, I use it in the bays and I use it in the surf. The very first thing you wanna do before coming down here or even planning your trip is to make sure you got a fishing pole. Now that, that might sound stupid, right? It's a lot cheaper to get the fishing poles where you live in Dallas, San Antonio, or wherever you're coming from. You wait to get down here and walk into Academy, you're gonna pay a little bit more. Plus, there's not gonna be hardly any good selection left of, of tackle and poles. That stuff goes like hotcakes down here. So get your stuff before you come down here. I'll make sure I have everything listed in the description of this video, and I will also list everything on my website. And that link will be down there as well and you could see the name of the website right here all right so the very first thing you want to do if you want to make sure that you're going to catch something when you come down here is get you some fish bites there's multiple flavors and all of them work really good down here my favorite flavor of fish bites is always going to be the easy shrimp shrimp flavor is is by far the best i think you also have uh, easy crab it works pretty good and you want to get easy clam. Clam works pretty good, but not as good, I think, as the shrimp flavor. You want to make sure when you're getting this that you get, it says easy on it, easy shrimp. Make sure it has the mesh in it. That way it lasts longer. You can catch numerous fish over and over again with just a little tiny piece about that big right there. So catch you pompano, it'll catch you whiting, whiting all the time, and it'll catch you uh, drum, and you know, you just take a little teeny piece of this and put a little teeny piece of shrimp on. Another thing that works very well is a product called Fish Gum right here. It, it's excellent stuff. And this stuff right here, man, this will catch you pompano. It'll catch you whiting. It'll catch you drum. Now this comes from Florida. What the hell are you bugging me for? Are you just staring at your trailer or are you doing anything good? Uh, I'm shooting a video on on me being a professional fisherman. Oh my god. <laughs> you know it's right, right? How many professional fishermen you know that catch perch? <laughs> Let me tell you something, buddy. I can outfish you any day. Whatever. You have never outfished me. Shit. <laughs> Who was catching fish be before I sunk my boat? I was catching fish left and right. Were. No, you weren't catching shit except a buzz. Oh shit! No, remember I didn't drink. All my beer was floating around. Remember that's what the Coast Guard said. Man, that was kind of weird. We saw all these unopened beers floating around. You were a trip when you used to fish. Now I'm professional. Well, I have a YouTube you would channel. Two of those 16 ounce weights on there, and then the, you would get into a section where the current was a little heavy, pulling on those weights. And you, I got a big one! <laughs> <laughs> and all you did was wrestle those weights in. When you have a YouTube channel, that makes you a fisherman. Oh, okay. Don't eat it tonight, That's my best friend from Austin, man. He was on the boat with me when we decided to go out into the Gulf for the very first time on my boat, and we ended up sinking the boat. I'll use a little piece of shrimp bites about that big and then I'll take about the same size little piece of shrimp and put that on the hook and drum love that. I also use a uh, live mullet when I can catch it with a cast net. I'm not very good at a cast net. I got a five foot cast net but I use mainly a three foot and I, I have a hard time throwing that damn thing. My five foot I can't even throw that so I'm not very good at cast net. But try to have you a cast net so it'd be cheaper. You can catch your own bait down here, especially in the surf. I also use live shrimp. That works pretty well down here, but it's expensive. Plus you wanna make sure you're not just catching whiting with the live shrimp. And if you throw live shrimp in the surf, you're usually gonna catch a lot of whiting. To me, that's a waste of money. 
because you can catch whiting on something cheaper like uh, fish bites. So I use dead shrimp, live shrimp, fish bites uh, when I'm not catching things on lures. Very rarely will I buy crab and use crab. If I can catch my own crab, I'll use that. I also use whiting for bait that I catch off the fish bites and I'll cut that up and put it on a pompano rig or just a single hook. I'll usually catch a, like a ladyfish. You can also catch trout. You can catch some redfish, you can catch shark, just about anything. So when you use ladyfish on a hook, that's your best bet. By far the best bait I think down here is cut ladyfish. I've caught uh, monster trout, redfish, and everything off, off ladyfish. First, you, you, you bait your hook with uh, shrimp bites and shrimp, and then you catch the whiting, and then you cut the whiting up and use that for bait. And then you get the skipjack or ladyfish, and then you cut that up and use it for bait. That's your best bet. So if you catch a ladyfish down here, save it. It's the best bait I think down here, even in the bays, uh, the surf, off piers, you name it. Cut ladyfish to me is number one, man. So now we covered um, the baits and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over the tackle. <laughs> My number one thing to go to when the conditions are right and you can throw it off the Port Aransas jetties, you can throw it off the surf, you can use it in the bays. I haven't caught that much in the bays off of it, but in the surf, in the jetties, I catch them. Is going to be what's called a rooster popper. This thing is freaking amazing. It's a top water, and I'm telling you, once you catch a big, big monster trout or redfish on a top water, it's exciting as heck. They make different sizes of these rooster poppers and different colors, as you can see right here. It's two different colors. I had more, but I've lost a couple on the jetties. Like everybody loses stuff on the jetties. But this is the monster right here. The skipjack love these things. I don't know why, man, but they'll, they'll hit it left and right. Let's walk them to the shore. Got a wind out of the North Pole. That looks like a ladyfish. Ladyfish, ladyfish. Come on, come on, buddy. Look at him, man. I love how these things fight. Shit. Damn. <laughs> Holy hell, that was like a freaking torpedo, man. That was freaking awesome there, man. Smart ass fish, let me tell you guys. Smart fish. So if you want to get some skit jack for bait, use your one of these, the small one right here. If you want to get past the skip jack, use the bigger ones right here like if you just have a school skipjack and that's all you're catching throw this monster on right here this rooster popper and this thing will um you can hear it. hear it it makes a lot of noise man and you just throw it in the water reel it in a little bit and then pop it a little bit reel it in a little bit pop it a little bit and it's great man my favorite one that i catch the most fish is this color right here it's the blue and then green on the bottom the next thing that I go to when a rooster popper is not working, and usually if a rooster popper ain't working, there ain't nothing gonna work, is I'll go with what's called a mirror lure. These things, I've caught a lot of trout, a lot of redfish on these things, skipjack as well. And so you can use, when the fish are biting pretty good, hitting pretty good, you can use either one of these, the rooster popper or the mirror lure, and you'll be pulling them in. Off the Port Aransas jetties, I uh, will try a rooster popper and then I'll try a mirror lure. If nothing's hitting, then I'll bring out my spoons. And I got three different sets of spoons that I use and they're all silver. I've never used a gold spoon and maybe, maybe someday I'll buy one and try it out. Normally I'll throw a three ounce spoon. Now I've yet to catch anything off this three ounce spoon yet but i've seen like thresher fishing throw these things out there and catch monster reds and stuff like that out there maybe someday i'll catch something off this when i go to the jetties i really don't fish the jetties too much it's just too much of a pain too many people to try to carry your equipment all this camera equipment i got to take out so i don't that's why i don't fish that that much out there but this thing works pretty good i've seen people catch monster fish with this this is a three ounce and then I don't know what the ounce is on this thing here. This is a smaller one. I'll use this in a surf. I haven't tried this in a surf yet, uh, but I've used this in the surf and I've caught redfish and skipjack and stuff like that. And then I have a smaller one. I believe this is like, I don't know, one ounce. You can see the size difference here. And then you got the smaller one 
versus the bigger one here. So basically those are all the top waters and stuff that I use. Now let's cover soft plastics. I've tried many different uh, items and I've only had luck with two or three of them. If you want to throw some soft plastic, get you some DOA shrimp. This by far will catch you a lot of fish in the bays. Uh, I'll throw it if the surf is calm. This thing is freaking amazing. And they make multiple colors. I've only had real good luck with the clear. As you can see, this one right here, you can see the difference. This one has a green tail and it's a darker color, like a cinnamon color. I don't know what they're called, chartreuse or something like that. But these work good. Now, every once in a while, I'll catch something on here, but man, this thing right here, trout and redfish love this thing. Flounder, um, you name it, any fish out there, pretty much. They come in packs of three and you can buy them on our store. Uh, you can get them at, I don't think, I don't know if Walmart has them, but any fish and tackle place should have these. They're real popular. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, you can't resist this. Oh yeah, got him, got him, got him, guys. Oh shoot, that's a good size one too. Holy cow. Yes. On the new rod and reel setup, man. Off a of DOA shrimp. Look at this big old thing. Let me show you what I'm rocking with. I'm rocking with a little shrimp lure and I'm gonna see if I can catch anything. Yeah. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a ladyfish. Ooh, look at that. I caught that, boys. What the hell is that? Bite your ass, man. He will what? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sideways so I can see him. Look at his teeth. The next soft plastic that I like to use is called a wedge tail. You guys can see that right here. And they make multiple colors. You could see this one. And then we have the smaller one with the yellow greenish tail. So there's all kinds of different shades. These are the two that I have the most luck, which is kind of like a purplish and a little tan on the bottom. Uh, flounder, man, flounder will hit this, I'm telling you. Trout, redfish. Clear one, I haven't had that much luck on yet. It's this color right here. We sell these in the store as well. Everything that I talk about on here, you can buy at our store at txbeachbum.com. txbeachbum.com. It's all listed there. Here's another one here, and I forget what they call this one here too, man. This is kind of like a mullet, a little skinny mullet. You could catch some redfish on this. You could catch uh, trout. That's it on the soft plastic, guys. I don't, I don't use too much of it your DOA shrimp and your wedge tails. This is, that's about it, man. Just having those, that's enough right there to catch fish. Right here in the surf. I've never tried this in the surf. Let's see what we can do with this. Fish on, fish on. Look at this. Look at this big old flounder, man. Oh shit, damn. Son of a that was freaking dinner, man. Damn it. Now let's go over some of the jig heads I use. I only use like the color white and yellow and I use different sizes, but you guys can see these right here. There's different sizes and that's about all I use. I do have some smaller jig heads. I don't have them up here. They're real small. This is a pretty good size hook on here. So I usually just stick with this because it works. The white one kind of looks like a fish, fish head. And this type of swivels I use are really small, really, really small swivels. That's kind of swivels I use on my lines. Uh, I don't use really big ones. Next, we're gonna talk about floats, uh, bobbers, and stuff like that. I only use one brand of uh, a bobber or whatever you want to call it. It's called a popping cork, but that's the only thing I use out here. Anytime that I'm going to use something where I'm going to be using a float on the top, it's always a popping cork. And the main ones that I use are called the Four Horsemen, and you can buy those online. I'll put a link in the description as well. These by far, guys, are the best popping corks I've ever used. And they have different colors, yellow, orange, and I don't know what the other colors are but these are by far the best ones. Now these ones are a little bit shorter than the ones I usually use. The ones I use are the bigger ones right here. 
and you can hear the noise it makes. Throw your popping cork out there in the surf or in the bay, you pop it like that. Pop it again, pop it again, pop it again. And what that does, that attracts fish to come by. And check out your bait. I'm not really good with hook sizes. This one here, it comes with the uh, popping cork. It's already attached to it and everything. So I don't know what size this is, but this is the actual perfect size for the fish that I'm targeting, redfish and uh, trout. That is by far my favorite popping cork. I've tried the ones at Walmart Academy. Yeah, I don't, I don't care for those. You're gonna pay a little bit more for the Four Horsemen, but man, I'm telling you, they're, they're the best popping corks, I think. Next, we're gonna talk about the hooks that I use. Most of the time, guys, when I'm fishing the surf, I'm using a pompano rig. Back, I don't know, a year, two years ago, when I first started using pompano rigs, I used to use the cheap ones, the ones you get at Walmart for like $2 and something cents. Um, they're also listed on the website as well txbeachbum.com. They're really cheap. They're only two dollars and I don't know 20 cents a piece or something like that. Make sure you get the one with two hooks only not three hooks. Believe me two hooks works wonderful. Three hooks it's too much of a pain especially if you get three whiting on there. Uh, they get tangled up and so on and so on. Earlier this year I wanted to try new pompano rigs out so I searched the internet and seen all kinds of different ones. I tell you what I fell in love with these pompano rigs and I think they're like six or seven dollars a piece but these are the best pompano rigs that I, I've, I've ever used. And I mean, they're called Salty's Pompano Rigs. As you can see, the color in these things is just amazing, man. These floats and then you got colored hooks and uh, they're just, they're freaking great, man. So you have the, the orange one here. And then you have the yellow ones and they make them all different colors and everything. These are handmade. Uh, I've been using those and these are the best pompano rigs. I love the hooks on here. The hooks are just freaking amazing. Get you some Salty's pompano rigs, guys. I'm telling you, you won't go wrong. If you're spending the money to come down here fishing, you have the money to buy Salty's pompano rigs, all right? <laughs> Get you some of these and take care of them, man. Don't lose them. Don't use them on the jetties or anything. Just use them in the surf. That way you can't get hung up on anything and just pray you don't get hooked to a shark or something, you know, or a barracuda. And to go along with these, you wanna get you a colored weight too, because remember what I said, color attracts fish. Remember now, some of the biggest fish that I've caught on this channel uh, were caught on pompano rigs. A 38 inch bull red. Caught on pompano rigs. 32 inch trout. Caught on pompano rigs. A lot of my big fish have been caught on pompano rigs. So really, I don't, I don't go for single hooks. I see a lot of fishermen and stuff like that use single hooks. But man, if you're coming down here for a couple of days, just hook you up some pompano rigs. If you got the correct bait, the right bait, you're gonna bring something in big. Occasionally, occasionally, I will hook up just a single hook. And most of the time, I use circle hooks. I think this is a size five circle hook. And it actually works pretty good, man. I've caught some pretty good sized fish on this circle hook. So this is a size five right here. Then I'll use a size two circle hook. But you can see the size difference between the two and five circle hook right there. Barely, rarely use a single hook setup. This one's kind of for if you want to catch a flounder or a, what are those called? Mangrove snapper and stuff like that. If you want to go for the big boys and catch some redfish and some trout and stuff like that, you want to use a five or a two for the smaller ones like mangoes and, and uh, flounder. Occasionally I will use treble hooks Right here is a small one, and then I have a bigger one here. I don't know what size these are. For some reason, I think it would tear the fish up more than just using a single hook, so I don't, I don't use them too often. All right, let's talk about weights, sinkers, uh, stuff like that to hold your bait down. It really depends on where you're fishing. If you're fishing off the jetties, you don't want to use something like these expensive 
the Spontnik weights. <laughs> so don't use these off the jetties, man. Normal price is like $6.50 a piece for these. You don't want to use these fishing off the uh, jetties. Anywhere where you're liable to get snagged, you don't want to use these. The weights you guys want to use if you're fishing off the jetties, you could even use them in the surf when the surf is not that rough. I normally go anywhere from a three to a six ounce weight if I'm fishing off the jetties or anywhere where I think I'm going to get snagged. And then you got the smaller ones. Uh, if you're fishing in the bays where there's not that much current this is like a one ounce i'll use two ounce and then i'll use the uh i don't know what they're called bullet weights the round weights i have multiple sizes in this that i'll use but i prefer these right here the spunk net weights and these weights are going to cost you some money six dollars and fifty cents a piece they're going to cost you some money if you lose them but these things are pretty cool what makes these so nice guys is they're colored remember how i told you color attracts fish it's not a myth it really works but you got different colors you know here's a yellow kind of a orangish and then a red I, I like the red for some reason i just i love red but what makes these so special is these prongs the way they open and you will not get stuck in the sand you will not get stuck for example this versus this you better have some uh, mega muscles in your arms if you're going to be out there surf fishing with this thing right here this right here you could be a little girl and use this and fish with it and have no issues so now we're going to go over some of the knives that i use because this part of tackle out there when I'm surf fishing or I'm fishing anywhere pretty much in the bays or on the jetties. The very first thing I do is I have a pocket knife. Now I don't use this on fish and stuff like that, but I do use it for cutting lines and stuff like that. Now this isn't a knife guys, but this is my favorite tool right here. And I think it's like five or six bucks. I also put the link to that. It's little clippers to clip your line. If you get hung up and you can't get your line broke, then I use this right here. I've had this little thing right here, this little clipper thing over a year and a half and I haven't lost it yet, which I'm surprised. But I like them better than taking a pair of scissors out there because scissors will actually break, tear up, rust. This is pretty convenient. It fits really good in my tackle box. Then I use miscellaneous knives like this one I got from Roy's, which was, I don't know, six bucks. And this, I mainly use it to cut, cut bait and stuff like that. Then I have my, uh, my CUDA filet knife it's not the most expensive i think it's like 30 or 40 bucks i use that if i'm going to be cooking fish on the beach like we are this weekend then i have what's called a billy bay knife small i think you can pick these up at academy for four or five bucks then i have my pliers which i need to clean up they're real rusted and everything like that i need to get another pair of pliers i have my fish grippers just a cheap pair nothing expensive works pretty well then I have my bad boy knife. This is like a hundred bucks. It's from a company called Morocco or something like that. It's a sweet knife. I have yet to use this knife. I'm going to use it while I'm camping. Comes with a little sharpener on it and a ferro rod right here. I have another ferro rod that's better than this one that I'm going to be using, but this is a sweet knife. Yet to use this one here. Let's talk about some fishing line. What do I use on my poles and stuff like that? I'm not the type of person that's going to pay $30, $40 for a spool of line. Don't waste your money paying $30, $40 for a spool of, of line when you can get something like this for seven or eight bucks, maybe nine bucks, probably more now. But reaction tackle, guys. I've tested this out for the past two years, and I'm telling you, this stuff is amazing. This is the 20 pound blue braided line, and this is what I use in the surf. I also use it in the bays, on the jetties, wherever, man. On my light rod setup, I'll use the eight to 12 pounds, depending on what I'm fishing, braided as well, on my light setup. Reaction tackle. If you wanna save money online and get high performance, this is it right here. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these products whatsoever. Don't waste your money on an expensive line. Use it on things like these Spunt Nicks or Four Horsemen. Save yourself money and get these. With the money you save from not getting an expensive line, you could afford to get these, and these work really well. That's my personal opinion. Everybody needs to measure their fish out there and make sure they're legal. So what I suggest is just a little tape measure. It's not very big at all. I can't remember the... the the footage on this, but it'll cover most fish that I catch. <laughs> 
So it just snaps out like that. You measure the fish and then push the button and throw it back in your tackle bag. So that pretty much covers all the tackle, guys. Now I need to store all this tackle. It depends on where you're gonna fish. If you're gonna fish the jetties or if you're gonna fish the surf and you're pulling your vehicle right up to the surf, then you can go bigger on a tackle box. If you're fishing the jetties and you gotta walk on those rocks and climb up the rocks and stuff like that, you wanna go with a small tackle box. When I go fishing in the jetties and stuff like that, I'll usually carry a little backpack. That's what I would suggest right there. Enough to put, you know, my lures in there, a couple of sinkers if I'm fishing, you know, on the bottom but mainly I go out there and I fish with lures and this will handle it my little knives and stuff like that so that's what I use you know if I go on a pier or if I'm going the jetties that's what I'd highly suggest just a little backpack if you surf fishing you need a lot of room because you need the more stuff you bring to the surf the better your chances are I highly suggest this big old tackle bag We're on a boat, we're fun it's it's huge it's got all these compartments in it i mean it's sweet everywhere you go uh it's got compartments in it and this i highly recommend it it's expensive though but it is definitely worth it and it'll hold everything pretty much you got i don't know how many boxes it holds uh but it holds a lot of boxes pretty much guys i i use these type of plastic boxes right here uh, they'll fit right there in that large tackle box fine. I think I can fit like seven or eight of them in there. And I use this for all, all my gear. Um, and I'm glad I'm doing this video because it gives me a chance to clean it out before we go camping this weekend. But you can see right there, it has the inserts. I took it out because I'm cleaning it. That you can put in there to put different things and stuff like that. You can get these on Amazon really, really cheap. A lot cheaper, I think, than you could at Academy or anywhere else, if, especially if you got Amazon Prime. But that is what I use to store all my gear. Now, let's go over the rod, rod and reel setups that I use majority of the time fishing in the surf, jetties, and even in the bays. First, we're gonna talk about my light rod setup that I have right here. You can see it's got a DOA shrimp already on it. And this is this is an awesome setup here. This setup's gonna cost you about, uh, I believe it's about 120 bucks to set it up. And this is a Penn Fierce 2, I believe, HT100. And I got it installed on a Talvera inshore rod. The rod alone is gonna cost you about 100 bucks. And then the reel, I believe was 50 bucks. So this is about $150 setup right here. And what I like about it, it's very, very lightweight and it's comfortable. And it's got like a cork kind of uh, bottom here. But this is what I use in the bays and and shallow water and stuff like that. Sometimes I'll use it in the surf. If I see a lot of bait fish and stuff like that, I'll use this in the surf. Next is my Pen Battle 3 Limited Edition. This is a uh, 5000 and it is sweet. I love the hell out of this. Love the colors and this whole setup is gonna cost you about 220 with tax and everything. It's running 20 pound braided test line. This is a Battle 3 limited edition 5000. You guys see me reeling that big 38 inch bull red in Charlie's Pasture on this thing using a pompano rig with just dead shrimp. This right here guys is a Pen Battle 3 5000. I've got two of these. Uh, one's a 4000, one's a 5000. This is a sweet setup too. I use these in the surf, jetties, and in the bays. This one here I put together, it's a cheap Amazon uh, setup. It didn't cost me but uh, oh, probably about 45 bucks for the whole setup. So it's pretty sweet. And uh, I've cut a lot of, lot, of, lot of whiting and pompano and stuff like that on this. It only cost me about 40 bucks. It's not bad. I don't even know what the real name is. Oh, I can't even pronounce this, but it's just a cheap Amazon reel and it works pretty good. That about covers it guys, except for one thing. This is called a go fish. So if you want to record the fish actually hitting your bait, this is um, about 200 bucks. It's completely waterproof. It does have a light in there that you have an option you could turn on if the water's kind of cloudy and you need a little bit of light. But some of you guys have seen the video footage that I've shot using this thing. It works pretty good. It's just a pain to turn it on and know when it's actually recording, especially when you're out there in the bright sun. Uh, but once you get it working good, 
it does pretty good. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you make a comment down below. Or if you have something that would be beneficial to, to people that are fishing down here or coming down here on vacation, make a comment down below and, and let us all know. Get out there and catch some fish and we will see you next video. Peace, guys. Oh, 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 oh.